Um, welcome to the press con uh, conference regarding the Toyota Cheetahs and the Vodacom Bulls. Captain and coach. Hi, Jake, if I may kick off. Uh, quite, quite a few interesting changes there, um, particularly with Cornell going to outside centre and you brought in Ambrose Papier that's come off. And of course, you have your captain back. Yes. Yeah, Ashok, so I think the nice thing about this team is obviously we get Dwayne back. Uh, he didn't play last week. Um, and then a couple of changes that obviously Ambrose always said that he was going to get some game time. It was never a question of that he, you know, that he's, that, that he's sort of number two. We got two really good halfbacks and uh, gives me an opportunity for him to get some game time seeing he didn't play that much against the Griquas. Jake, um, just obviously most of the pack kept the same, just Johan Krobler coming in, just something on that. And you're obviously looking for them to be a lot more direct and physical this weekend. Uh, yeah, I mean, Johan Krobler, you would also know, Brennan, he had uh, some appendicitis beginning, then he got COVID. So, I mean, the poor guy basically sat out for a couple of weeks, um, probably about eight, nine weeks in total during the time we were together. So he has taken a bit of a while to catch up to the other guys. And now that we feel he's on par and he's sort of got, you know, got into, into the shape we want him to get into, he gets a start. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's not just a case of being direct against the Cheetahs. I thought on Saturday, we on last Saturday against Crickers, we went from side to side. We probably uh, should have gone a little bit more direct. You know, once or twice when we went through the middle, guys like Jason broke, you know, broke through. You know, guys like uh, Alric Lowe came on, went through the middle as well. So again, it's a... It's definitely an area of which we want to try and improve this weekend. Jake, uh, Kubis here. Um, just, just. Yeah, Kubis. Um, Jake, just in terms of Jade coming in, um, is there injury to, to Travis? And then just in terms of uh, Dwayne, a box like Dwayne and Trevor, Will they play on Friday night, regardless of the decision um, to play in the rugby championship or not? Later, it will, it's expected to be on Thursday. Will they play regardless? Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, Kubis, I don't know. I don't know what the, what, the, what the rules are there. I mean, obviously, we've prepared our team. I would like to think that, you know, the national coach said they need to get some game time under their belts. I would think that even if they are going to rugby championships, I'm sure all the players who are playing this weekend would need to get some sort of rugby under their belt. In terms of Jade, uh, you know, uh, one thing that we did notice is that in the last couple of games, we've only had a few games to analyse the Free State. They've made, you know, quite a few line breaks. So, again, we probably have to, you know, get a guy like Jade who's got massive amounts of pace uh, in our team. And then the other thing is they concede lots of line breaks. So, again, you know, we felt one area where we, we make some line breaks, uh, especially against Creek, was we didn't finish. So, to pick a guy like Jade, who's probably the quick, one of the quickest guys in our squad, to have him there, you know, obviously he's going to help us if we do make line breaks or if we have to counter against their line breaks. Hmm. Cool. And just for you, yeah, how, how is it to have the, the week off? And, uh, and how are you feeling? How's that knee? And then also, you, you obviously spent a lot of time in Bloom for 10, the early part of your career. Just uh, how difficult is it to play in Bloom? And some thoughts on the cheaters? Oh, Brendan, um, yeah, it's, I can't really say I had a, had a good good rest. Um, obviously, we had to take care of the knee and uh, get the swelling down. But um, at this very moment, we, we're happy where we are. And um, yeah, I can, I can play on Friday. So looking forward to the game. Um, yeah, I played. I played two years at the at the Cheetahs and and for the Cheetahs. So it was yeah, a fantastic time in my career. But um, obviously now, now they have become opponents, and uh, I have come up against them in the past. So obviously I'm I'm kind of used to playing against them, and um, and also playing in Bloom. So yeah, looking forward to to a big clash. I I, I know they. They'll be really pumped up. Um, you know, to 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 play the Bulls on. Uh, on Friday. Ryan Simon here. Um, uh, last week, obviously, you had the uh, uh, 
you didn't have the privilege of uh, the post-match interview and the information better the post-match info unless you watch the video. Um, oh. And I asked Jake about the um, possibility that um, the Bulls were let to to play uh, another um, uh, um, variation of their um, game plan. And Jake said, no, uh, it was like I said just now, it's instead a situation of playing from 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 um, line to line. Um, obviously, the the cheetahs are a different animal from from the uh, the, the previous game. Um, what what can we anticipate will happen once the domination comes from your opposition? Um, is it is it exactly the same type of situation where you are in? Uh, and for the fear of repeating myself. Um, and expecting the same question or the same answer from from Jake. Um, if 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 uh, the 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 A plan doesn't work, obviously there must be a B and a C plan. Yeah, I, yeah. So obviously I didn't I didn't uh, didn't see the post match uh, post match interviews, and um, so I can't really recall on that. But uh, I think uh, you know we we want to go into a, into a competition and play as consistent as we can. And uh, I think of our first game and that Super Saturday, we had a we had a great game and um, we executed our plays and we did exactly what we wanted to achieve. And um, then in a way, you know, we we got um, we got to play Greekos last weekend and uh, and the guys, um, you know, they they came out uh, with a with a massive bang and they, you know, they they there was a lot of character shown by by the players to you know to um to pull the win out of the hat at the end so i think we we've got a plan um how we want to play the cheetahs and uh, obviously you need to execute that plan i think past saturday we didn't really execute the plan um to perfection so you know if if the plan is set out you have to execute and if you if you don't execute you're going to you're going to see yourself behind your posts so um you know, the, there will be a plan B if 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 not um, if plan B doesn't uh, you know if if we if we don't execute plan A. But obviously, the most important thing is um, you have to you have to execute. Uh, if you can't execute, you you can't really move on to a plan B if you don't really do your do your job. Hi, Jake. Um, Hi, Jake. Um, just to. Uh, Go back to selection, but you you mentioned you mentioned Jade Stickling and and his pace against the the Cheetahs. Um, Hen Hendricks and Hans have been quite a promising midfield pairing for you so far. Um, bringing in Clinton Swart at twelve is, is that uh, kind of in response to Franz Stein? Uh, yeah, I suppose in a way. I mean, I know what France can offer, and I suppose if you give France lots of gain line, uh, then they play around him, and they obviously play off him as well. So, yeah, I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, it's uh, it has an influence, but at the same time, I think we all appreciate that we're not going to get away with playing Stedman, Hans, and Cornel Hendrick, uh, Cornel Hendricks every single week. Clinton's trained really well. Um, he comes from Free State. He's played at Free State as well, so he probably knows the stadium. Um, yeah, and I just think, again, I'd like to try different combinations, Ken. You know, I think uh, trying Ambrose Prepi this week as well, as I said earlier, you know, it gives me a chance. I said it after the Griquas game. I don't really know all these players, and I don't mean that, you know, I get to know them as they as they play, as they train, as they put in different situations. And I'd like to see that combination play, you know, and maybe moving Cornell to 13 might be, you know, might be a stroke of genius as well. He's trained really well there as well. He looks really comfortable when he's running next to a guy like Clinton as well. Sorry, Jake, if I, if I can just follow up on that. Um, Im, Imbro's Papier, um, I, I know there's obviously a rotational aspect to it, but is his game also maybe a bit better suited to the cheaters and, and because of the pace and the sort of expansive way they like to play? Yeah, well, I think, again, Ken, that's exactly it. I mean, as I said, they make lots and lots of line breaks. And, I mean, he's one of the quickest players as well. Um, but also, as I said, they give lots of line breaks to the opposition. In the last couple of games, I think they've averaged probably about eight line breaks that they've conceded. Now, if we can make some line breaks and get guys like Jade Stickling and, and guys like Ambrose Papi running through those holes and, and supporting each other, then we're going to get some try-scoring opportunities. So, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's as I said, it's uh, it it actually works out quite nicely because I'd like to see Embro start a game. I'd like to see how it combines with that with that backline, and yeah, and it gives me an opportunity against a side like the Free State Cheetahs, who who have got lots of pace and and obviously rely a lot on on their pace to see whether or not we can counter that. Dwayne, um, uh, uh, last week against uh, Kharikwas, there were a couple of good early malls. Um, just couldn't get over the line there, but then we didn't see too many other malls after that. Uh, is that something uh, that you guys have worked on this week? Um, certainly the Cheetahs forwards coach Cornel Fansale said today that he's certainly expecting a lot of malls from you guys. Oh, um, yeah, I think... You know, we when you get an opportunity to maul, obviously you're going to take it. Um, I think uh, against Grigos, like you said, there was a there was a couple of early early mauls we couldn't execute and we couldn't get um, you get the points on the board or even get a, get away with the penalty. So I think we we worked on it a bit, and every every single week you you're going to have to work on it um, because that's every week it's a it's a growing thing, and you have to you have to adapt uh, on the field and and two different teams that you play. But um, you know, obviously, when if we get an opportunity and uh, you know we can more, we we definitely going to take it. Um, so yeah, you know, I don't know. It, you know, uh, Cornel, I, I've played with Cornel von Sal, and uh, I, I know the way he he looks at at the malls and stuff. So yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a difficult one for us. But uh, yeah, looking forward to 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 the challenge that lies ahead. Jake, um, as ek nou hier na die uh, Cheetahs span kyk, um, ek wil harte volg hier na die achterlijn, toe kleit in blommiekies, elke jaar Bernard Janssen van Reisburg, Frans Stein, Roscoe Spekman. Dit is manne wat uh, laatst week uh, baie energie gehad het, en uh, die midveld vooral uh, lekker aan die gang gehou het. One-on-one, Cornal, Clinton, Alwit, Giel, um, dit gaan sekerlik een uh, baie opportunistische deel wees van jylle plan, om die ouwens eerstens uh, aan bande te le, en dan om um, van daar af uh, hulle op, op druk te sit en uh, die voordeellijn aan te val. Ja, sê man, sê precies dit, ek dink, uh, men het een goeie achterlijn, jy het gesien, dis hoekom hulle, ek dink hulle selle span gekies het, jy weet, hulle was uitstekend geweest in die eerste helft, um, en die dree wat hulle gedruk het, val, vooral teen, uh, teen aanval, uh, was uitstekend geweest, so uh, ons weet, dit gaan in area wees, waar hulle gaan probeer vir ons onderrug, uh, maar ek sê nou na die uitdaging, jy weet onthou die Noordrands Val Vrystaat games in die oude jare was altyd moeilike games gewees, en ek is seker die billet in die Cheetahs hierdie jaar gaan precies die selle game wees. Jake, uh, breakdowns were a, a bit of an issue for you last week, um, and it, it seemed the major sort of issue was the difference between how the breakdowns were blown the first game and the second game. Um, yes. Quinguini Jadazweni is your is your referee on Friday night. Uh, what do you know about him? I mean, which, which sort of camp is he going to fall into, do you think? Yeah, yeah Ken, it's interesting. You know, uh, you know people, I, I looked at the game. I'm not sure if people are aware, but we gave nine penalties away, which is an incredible stat for any team in a, in a provincial game. Nine penalties. Uh, at the breakdown, not one penalty did we give away on defensive breakdowns. When we gave two away for for coming from the side, uh, and one of them was a mistake by the referee, which he admitted. Tim Magaba actually got pinned the wrong wrong way around. Um, so from the breakdown point of view, I wasn't. I was. I was merely suggesting, and that's. I think we had a meeting this morning with all the referees, uh, just in terms of being consistent about the picture. You know, for me, the question is quite simple, Ken. Is it better to have the ball or not have the ball? You know, and the reality is, if you got the ball. And all the penalties are, go, are going against you because you're coming from the side and sealing off. Then we'll probably better not to have the ball, you know. And I thought, and again, there's nothing right or wrong. I mean, I looked at that rugby New Zealand tournament, and and for the first three weeks, the team that was carrying the ball was getting penalised, and the last three weeks, the team that was defending was getting penalised. So I, me, I merely said, and I think again, you know, we were very accurate at the breakdown. We gave nine penalties away, as I said, and and for them. Man, more breakdown penalties, in fact, none on defence. So it is an area of the game that we're working on. We've got a full-time defence, I mean, breakdown coach. Um, and which camp the referee will be in, I don't think it's a question of what camp. I think it's just a picture of what, you know, what what picture he wants to referee and what picture he's going to see. You know, I think at the end of the day, 
if the trend is that the team that keeps the ball, you know, gets penalised a lot, you know, then obviously we we're probably going to be quite lucky because Free State like to keep the ball in hand and play for many many phases. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game, and I, and I say it again from a refereeing point of view because I'm sure referees and players are adjusting. We haven't played rugby for seven months. Referees haven't ref for seven months. So I'm sure it's going to take a while for that whole interpretation and for the players and referees to be on the same page. Jake, net, um, net terug met um, jou, jou skramskakels, net van een brede perspektief af. Ek meen, soos jy soos jy genoem het, dis, dis twee, jy weet, wereldgehalte skramskakels wat jy in jou groep het en dinge, maar albei het maar bykie erken, jy weet, verlede jaar dat hulle gesikkel het eindelijk met hulle competitie tussen mekaar. Jy weet, elkeen kon maar nie op, jy weet, jy altemal, jy weet, consistent vorm, jy weet, en die dinge bewerkstellig nie. Um, is daar is daar enige sielkundige ingesteldheid of attitude ding wat jy wat jy probeer aanpas het by hulle of is het maar net nog steeds om jy weet baie clear communicatie te hê? Ja, eins het, ek meen as soos jy sê verlede jaar ek dink hulle was bietjie teleurgestel die feit hulle kon nie kon nie ritme gekry het nie al twee wou baie gespeel het. Ek dink hierdie jaar het ons nou vir die pre ingebring. Hy help hulle wekeliks nou om hulle game op te skerp. Ek dink die ander ding, ons is eerlijk met al twee, hulle besef, jy weet, dis a, dis a, dis a, dis twee toernooie in een, ons krij nou die super rugby, en dan krij ons die carry beker, maar dis week na week, alles is in twee maanden, drie maanden ingesit, so die feit is, is onmoendlik om een oukie te speel elke week, en, en elke week, jy weet, die selwe persoon in die span te sit, so hulle verstaan het nou, ek dink, ek dink die reels, en ek dink die situasie is maar ander, Um, en ek dink hulle al toe is gelukkig oor die feit dat hulle gaan genoeg game tijd kry, dis uh, geleentheid vir ons ook om combinaties te probeer en ek is, net soos Perenare en Smith met die All Blacks is het belangrijk ons moet al twee positief hou en al twee kans gee om seker te maak hulle kan, ja hulle kan hulle beste gee vir die bille elke week Ok, any more questions? Yeah, sorry, I've just got one more. Um, Jake, can you give us some sort of uh, indication about Lizo Kaboka and just how bad his calf injury is? How long is he going to be out yeah. for? Yeah, no, at this stage, it looks like it's probably going to be about three weeks, three to four weeks. I mean, but you never really know with a prop and a calf injury. I mean, the reality is that, you know, if a prop can't scrum and, and, and wait on that, obviously it uh, takes a lot longer than be another player, you know, so... Yeah, at this point in time, they've said about four weeks, and but we'll see. You know, we'll just keep monitoring from week to week, and and you know, hopefully it'll be quicker. But if not, you know, that just basically means that we'll get him towards the back end of Super Rugby of our Super Rugby campaign. Uh, Jake, and then just quickly, Kurtley Arden, sir, um, was he just left out this week, or? As fuck, he's probably available at a push. Again, I probably didn't want to risk him. You know, it's a, because we play Friday, if we played Saturday maybe or Sunday, maybe it'd be okay. So in all likelihood, he'll be available for the Stormers next week, uh, for the Sharks next week and the Stormers when we play the Stormers. Okay, 